isa ka bang negosyante na gustong magbenta online? Pero namamahalan at nahihirapan gumawa ng sariling online store? Paano kung sabihin ko sa'yo na pwede ka na magbenta online kahit hindi ka teki? May mura at hindi masakit sa bulsa na paraan para makapagsimula ka sa sarili mong online store. Tumatanggap rin ito ng credit cards and cash on delivery para sa mga orders. Nakakonekto sa mga kilalang delivery providers sa Pilipinas. At higit sa lahat, wala ka nang kailangan bayaran na interest at commission sa bawat benta. San ka pa? Gusto mo yon? Gusto ko yan! Hmm? Paano mo nasabi? Lahat yan, magagawa ng online store builder ng Prosper na. Sige, masubukan <coughs> na. Paano ba simulan? Ang gagawin nyo lang ay mag-set up ng account, mag-upload ng logo, at maglagay ng mga products. In just one click, konektado na agad ang mga payment at delivery partners nyo. Pwedeng-pwede na kayo sa e-commerce. Sa halagang abot kaya. Ganun ba? Ganun talaga. Kaya book ka na ng free demo at simulan na ang online negosyo para dumami pa ang benta. Lahat ng yan bigay sa'yo ng numero unong online store builder ng Pilipinas. Mag-prosper na sa Prosper na! Digital Hour is back for another fun-filled and insightful session where we learn all about the latest digital trends, tips, and news. I know that, so how's everybody uh, this Wednesday afternoon? I hope that we are doing well. I know that it's already the last um, Wednesday of the month and some of us are already rushing, but I hope that we'll be able to learn from this from this session again so without further ado let us welcome back our fellow ceo and founders dennis velasco and andrew diamante hey justin hey andrew hey, dennis. awesome awesome well uh okay. super excited uh to be here with our friends from lazy labs and uh there's andrew yes uh, hey guys <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had to refresh my internet just so that can be <laughs> pitch perfect here. <laughs> cool, cool. There cool. you go. Happy, happy hour, man. Yes. Yes. And this time I brought my drink. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, we all have our it drink. It is indeed. Happy, happy hour. Let's go. Yes. Let's start with a cheers to uh, yes. cheers to empowering the Philippine MSME community. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so let's get this Pause show on the road. So um, hey, first, I, um, we, just, we just want to um, a little background of the Philippine MSME state. Now, do you have any um, as you uh, do you have anything that you can say about the landscape now, especially that we are already almost one year, almost one year and more in the lockdown. So, do you have any? um insights regarding the philippine landscape and how it will go towards the other months of 2021 mm. heaps of improvement honestly mm -hmm. massive improvement especially for the msmes yeah I mean, um, everybody knows the statistic right 99 percent of the philippines companies are small to medium enterprises yes. and uh, yes. now the interesting thing that um, we've seen is that even though there's that you know so many more number of SMEs uh, they're really still um, contributing well let me say it this way the large conglomerates are contributing a tremendous amount to the uh, to the uh, gross domestic product of the economy um, compared to the MSMEs. Correct. Now, uh, I'm not sure if any of you guys saw this, but I think it was Monday of this week, 
but uh, Ayala, as a publicly traded company, announced some pretty grim forecasts about when they will start seeing and predicting the the bounce back of the economy. And um, you know, they were saying that you know it's not going to be until 2024. Wow. And, when you see a company that contributes uh, that much to the economy with, um, you know, they've got all the analysts in the world that are, you know, doing research, trying to figure out their game plan. And look, let, they're, let's face it, they're, they're feeling it, right? Whether you're a Yala, Phil Invest, or, you know, any other traditional retailer, um, you know, retail foot traffic has gone down at least 70%. Sure. Now, I don't bring that up, you know, just to be a downer here in our digital happy hour. But to me, that makes everybody, large conglomerates, medium-sized enterprises, small businesses, micro and home-based businesses, that creates a clean slate. That creates an even playing field. I agree. Because I agree. nobody was prepared to go digital. I'm sorry, what? unless your name is uh, Lazada, Zalora, eBay, or Amazon. <laughs> I agree. Oh, Choppy, right? <laughs> your friends at Choppy. Unless that's your name, I mean, let's be honest, you weren't prepared to go digital. Yeah. Right? I agree. And I think that is where the opportunity is for micro, small, and medium enterprises. They're sure. faster, they're nimbler, yeah. right? So they don't have a lot of bureaucracy to make decisions. Um, and MSMEs are really known to get shit done. They do. And if they have okay. the courage and the access to uh, people that know what they're doing, uh, skills on how to improve their processes to be digital, and yes. access the technology, then they will be the ones that will be the future drivers of the Philippine economy. Anyway, that's my piece right there. Just to kick us off. <laughs> I agree. How about you, Andrew? Honestly, hands down. Yeah, I, I truly agree with um, Dennis. Um, with the pandemic, to be honest, I would even argue it's a good thing <laughs> that um, that it leveled the playing field because now I think there's no there's no excuse for um, – for entrepreneurs to not be able to um, succeed. Because now we're all kind of level playing field. We're trying to adapt into a digital world, trying to find ways to beat the bigger conglomerates. This is the big thing, guys. Like This is like a David and Goliath thing. Um, and the funny thing there is a lot of the MSMEs are David's. Like, we can really win it. The Goliath, they take a while to really adapt things. And I think that's a huge upside where we can really make the most that we're nimble, we're quick. And kind of the overview for me as well with um, the state of the economy right now. True, yeah. the pandemic was definitely a huge hit for a lot of, you know, the majority of us. But I think there's always a um, silver lining to everything. And that silver lining is definitely that this is on... This is the, the odds are definitely in our favor, and um, we should really find ways to become digital. Let's not argue anymore that you know is digital still going to be a thing. Let's just accept <laughs> it as that, and yeah. basically find a way to um, actually find a set way there, right? <laughs> find a way, yeah. man. Find a way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Andrew, look, um, I don't. I mean. How many purchases have you made online this week? Ungodly amounts. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. <It's> crazy. <laughs> Justin, what have you bought online? Now. Sorry? I think I bought everything. Now. I bought yeah. everything um, off of Shopee and Lazada. I actually Shopee mainly because Lazada isn't really as good in late there. But more or less, like, oh. I think... Uh, oh, there I... goes Andrew. He'll be back. So, what Justin, what, yeah. have you, what have you bought, Justin, online lately this week? Just this week. 
Well, actually, yeah. I've bought a lot of um, skincare products since um, most of the shops are just essentials on the mall. So your, you know, the things that you want, like skincare or the clothes that you like, it's more of a for online now. And actually, I've seen a surge of also orders in my active wear shop. Like people are really ordering again. Um, for exercise, I think it's because you know it's summer and they want to catch Look up on their you, yeah. summer body, <laughs> even if it's Look just indoors. Good. Yeah, actually, that's a very interesting point. That yeah, if you are going to venture out, it's basically the essentials that are open, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, people still want and desire other products and services that you know, make up their daily normal life, true. right? That's true. I and bought that's okay. um, my groceries this week, which includes my favorite, uh, you know, snack of popcorn. Um, yes. I bought probably uh, three dozen worth of, um, you know, you know, uh, home-baked uh, cookies. Uh, Chocolate cookies for my kids. They're always asking me for, Daddy, where'd you get those cookies? I um, Primo. <laughs> bought That's some, so uh, what, what what do you call it? Ensemada. Even Ensemada mm -hmm. that you used to go down the street, right? At the local Sorry Sorry store or whatever, or Red yeah. Ribbon. I bought that from a local um, home-based business. There you go. And you know what? I... I you know, I not only bought some for us, but I bought some and I gave some to our neighbors, right? Wow. You know, just to share, um, that doesn't include, you know, all the stuff that my wife, you know, has, uh, sorry, hopefully uh, she's not listening, but <laughs> maybe she is. I get deliveries every day, right? <laughs> From whatever it is that she's buying, primarily plants and stuff for the house because she's you can't go bug. anywhere. so. Now you're you're destined to make every nook and cranny of your home livable, livable, desirable, sure. right? Make it your paradise and your oasis. Anyway, um, Andrew, back to you. You were you were talking about all those gadgets and uh, you know stuff that you've been buying online. Yeah, I was just saying that I actually bought everything online. I think I bought drones. I bought a Whoa. DSLR camera, um, laptops, honestly. Um, oh, Because I've been yeah. doing that yeah. since way back in his own. But now I actually just really solidified it. You know, Philippines is actually ready for um, like electronics or anything of high value to be delivered. Because yeah. I think it was, it was kind of so-so back then. Like I, I wasn't sure if... Um, we were able to kind of accommodate um, delivery outside of cities. But now I can really say that, yeah, it works. Philippines is ready. Philippines is here. Like, I think it's just a matter of finding a way and refining that system that we have. Mm. But, now, um, um, yeah. I was going to ask, um, you know, do you have any, both of you, do you have any... Uh, good stories on how smooth the transactions went and do you have any horror stories on how the transactions Oof. went <laughs> funny funny thing is now that you mention like now that you said um i don't have any horror stories i think it's all been good like i don't know, knock on wood of course but yeah i've had a pleasant time um all throughout the um the buying process i think the only time that we we got kind of like. Oh. Oh. Okay. It was just the anyway, wrong. Anyway, so Justin, um, what? Yeah. Like well, they just sent us the wrong what? item. Oh. But they just yeah. sent it right away. That's so, yeah, honestly, everything's been good for me. Yeah. That's good to hear. 
Yeah, because I think now couriers are very careful, especially there are cases where if they if customers receive a bad service, they tend to put it on the internet. So I think the standards now are very high when it comes to customer service of courier. Yeah, that's why I they think there there are less complaints now. Yeah, yeah. but I think it's just getting through yeah. the beta phase. Once we're out of it, we are good. But we need people to really test it out. I, I think that's the key thing. We'll never know until we try it, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, a couple of interesting things, and you guys know um, how weird I am, but um, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just a big observer. And so, um, yeah, so admittedly, you know, um, you know, my wife and I included will, uh, you know, we're looking at parts of our home that, you know, we really didn't, you know, pay a whole lot of attention to and are, you know, are investing in making it nice, you know, and um, we found this um, wonderfully, uh, and this is just great because, of, as you know, the Philippines is the capital of handicrafts and just extremely um, talented craftspeople. Yes. And we bought this wonderful um, uh, coffee table, a custom designed coffee table made wow. to order. I, I want to explain the price because, um, you know, uh, I, 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 don't, I, I can't debate or argue with my wife. If she wants it, she wants it. There's nothing I could do about it. Right? Yes. Isn't she yeah. lucky? Yeah. So, so, <laughs> and but so in the low. In an online shop, like just a local online shop. Great question. Um, this one was not. It was on Facebook, right? Nice. And I did look at some online shops. Um, most of them were on the online shops were not a uh, custom handcrafted uh, coffee mm -hmm. table, and so we wanted something unique uh, just for. Uh, this particular space in our in our home and so I'll tell you about the description of the process because I think that's a big thing that we're going to talk about we're going to talk about how to automate how to create efficiencies and give SMEs some uh, some tips and pointers on that and the best way to understand what's possible is to maybe understand what is the existing process right exactly so you know I went back and forth with this person Right. The first step um, when buying this coffee table on Facebook was number one to to know and figure out um, what their options were. What are the available products? Sure. So it, it took this young lady. Uh, I don't know. She probably only responded 20, 30 minutes later. And yeah. um, and then. Uh, you know, of course, the first question is, you know, is this available? And then it was like, no, because that's a stock photo. And I was oh, like, God oh. dang it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is, you know, this is what we're looking for. And then she sent me, she blew up my, my Facebook messenger. It was like, bing, 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 bing. Oh, and my was God. Like, that's the worst. 24 oh. different you know, images wow. and, you know, I had to download each one just to make sure. And it just, you know, took a little bit of time. And then um, they did have some, some, you know, designs that we liked. And then uh, from there, you know, it was just, you know, a Q and a, right. It's like being on an online store where you've got all the frequently asked questions, yes. but being a very picky person and by, by nature, when you're selling a customized product, People are going to have a lot of questions. Okay. But I would bet that my questions that I asked are probably the same questions that you would ask, the same questions that Justin would ask, right? Typical questions. Yeah, they're all typical questions. And uh, so they were able to make one, and then we were talking about delivery, and then we started negotiating on price. And then when it starts to getting down to the payment and making the decision, uh, you know, I was like, she well, her payment terms were 50% upfront, 
and it was a it was a large sum of money. I mean, well, I don't know. It depends, I guess, what large is. But you know, it was an expensive coffee table. Like when when I look at buying a coffee table when I was back in my college days, I'm like, you know, I'm cheap, right? <laughs> but <laughs> but I my wife my wife had to choose this thing, and it was it was a size uh, in terms of uh, cost where you know they're not going to make a custom product unless you put a deposit, right? I wouldn't if I was a merchant and a seller. So, you know, she said, well, it's 50% deposit, 50%, you know, uh, COD. I'm fine with that. I mean, I want the product. I've made that decision. Hmm. And, um, but first I'm like, well, before I give you my deposit, you know, tell you tell me your full name. You connect with me on Facebook because I want to see your real profile. I don't trust a seller's profile. You can create a seller's profile in 10 seconds, right? Mm. And then I ask yeah. them to send, send me an ID, right? Because I don't know whose personal Gcash account this is that I'm sending yeah. you know, money to. Yeah, right? it's a bit sketchy, right? <laughs> yeah. And then I asked her, wait a minute. Why is your name on your profile, right? It's different than your ID name, and it's different than the oh, name oh. on different on, on of the name. It's a different name on the GCash, right? I'm not trying to be rude, but I, I'm a le, you know as they call it. Uh, you know, I, I start to say when I shop on Facebook, I'm a legit buyer of all, right? Blinded <laughs> person, legit not buyer. bogus buyer, <laughs> legit buyer. <laughs> Yeah, legit by your fault, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, oh, Justin, you've got some fans there. Oh, hello. Hey. <laughs> so anyway, so dude, this process was, you know, probably an hour. And man, here I am. I, I mean, just like everybody, everybody, even if it's pandemic lockdown, everybody's busy. I'm like, I don't have time to check and verify and qualify and double check the phone number with the id and the name on the facebook profile luckily my wife really wants the coffee table because if it was me you know i would have given up sure you know so i'm sorry man to rant but it, it you know if you're gonna make any real game changing or real career building income online yeah. you know you gotta smooth out your operations and make it easy for people to buy from you i agree mm. <laughs> yeah it's gotta That's be easy test. it's a lot of barriers to entry <laughs> if oh. it takes that much to buy oh my god forget it like nah yeah <laughs> i even asked her for customer oh. references oh yeah. wow because she, she had a new profile and, and, you know, there was no reviews. And again, because of the, uh, the, the, the size of the cost. Now she did send me some pictures, right. Of people in their living room with their beautiful handmade coffee tables. Right. Oh, Hey, we've got some, uh, some fans out there, direct manufacturer of high quality products. Like uh, <laughs> okay, there you go. Oh, yeah. Venta, venta po. <laughs> <laughs> Legit hey, venta, venta. <laughs> I, I appreciate the efforts. See Andrew, legit buyer yen. <laughs> yes, not bogus. Hindi po bogus. Legit yeah. buyer. <laughs> legit buyer. So anyway, what were you gonna say, Andrew? Yeah, honestly, <laughs> that's a that's a crazy story. So, um, sorry, what, what was I saying again? about the um just buying experience oh i think um overall my buying experience has been great like i don't know, knock on wood nothing happened um i've been buying um online stuff i think the very first huge purchase that i ever did back in the day back in his on i think it was through ebay and i bought an alienware laptop Okay. That was back when I was in uni. <laughs> so, yeah, I think after I got through that stage of like, oh, okay, I can actually buy stuff online, I kept doing it. 
And then when I got to Philippines, I think it was a bit tricky because it's a bit different here. Like the, you know, the setup and everything, especially like the addresses. Um, oh. and at one point as well, I think um, it was also easy for me to come to the kind of like to warm up to it because I actually sold luxury sneakers back in 2018. And I think the biggest ticket item that we sold was like half a million for one pair oh, of sneakers. Wow. wow. Yeah. Some Pharrell That's Williams. And I'm then not a human that, race. Yeah. I don't know that so luxury, luxury shoes are a very profitable industry now. You know, if you're a reseller of it's like a Nike and Adidas, it's a good online business. Yeah. Especially if you're an huge. authorized one. Yes. So um it's huge. actually getting to that, um, since mm. uh, we became online, have you noticed any industries that really suddenly surged with um availing your product when the pandemic came? Like for example, before they did you didn't really see that industries, but once the um pandemic came, they really surged up your um that industry. I think e commerce, digital marketing. Like no joke, right? <laughs> How did you guys um like observe it, Dennis, when like before the pandemic and then after the pandemic? Did you guys notice like a really kind of upward trend to the adaptation of um e commerce websites for clients? Yeah, I mean, uh, we were very blessed. Um, I mean, we we just announced actually, uh, and there was uh, mention on the uh, the newswire. Uh, if you just Google it up, the um, last year we ended up with 264% growth, and um, this year we're growing on average 30% um, every month over month. So uh, huge kudos to our team and yeah. our partners like you guys and of course our customers. But I think Justin, you know, you're you were centered really around um, you know what industries, right? Yeah. And in online selling, you know? Yeah, that's um, huge. I think the, the the weirdest obvious one for me is again the uh the whole plant uh buying plants plant industry. Yeah. <laughs> that, the plant dude, dude, let's face it, that you can't get any more traditional than that. Sure. You know, nobody ever dreamed of doing anything to buy plants except for going to a nursery mm, yeah that, that that was the, basically the only first mental option right mm. now i mean my wife is following these plant experts right <laughs> oh man i've seen those guys yeah yeah and yeah. they're actually good and they are slick and you can and they're they're selling live you know and um, again, not sure if uh, you guys have heard this story, but uh, we, yeah. you know, at the uh, beginning of the rainy season last year, you know, in the lockdown, right? The rainy season is always a great time to uh, really spruce up your garden. And, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I bought two truckloads of, you know, plants and grass for my wife. Two truckloads. To, to, yeah, to oh. make it get oh, into the... Uh, the timing for the uh, for the rainy season, and I found these people online, right? So I, that's an obvious big one. Um, you know, the one that is uh, that you would have thought that I would have been a big um, customer of is the groceries. You know, honestly, I I never uh, really yeah. bought groceries yeah. online, and even in the U.S., yeah. it kind of went yeah. up and down, like. You know, at a time, the grocery online shopping went boom, and then there was a time when it went bust. And, um, you know, uh, you know, we, are, we're, we, we had our uh, Landers online purchase today, and uh, they, they delivered it today. So, Andrew, what's in your, in your area? What is there any good, you know, big local businesses out there that have kind of jumped to the online world? To, to be honest, like the, the biggest thing that I, I've noticed is the food delivery service has really 
um, seen an upsurge. Um, back in 2018, I think it was so-so. Um, everyone was kind of like, oh, yeah, food delivery is good, but we can just go to the restaurant. That's fine. We could just drive through. It's fine. But now it's it's like a legit staple. <laughs> so getting your food delivered is like, yeah. it's it's a need. <laughs> so I yeah. think that one has been very much interesting to me. Because get this, Dennis, back in, I'd say like 2011, I actually started a food delivery service in New Zealand. And um, I called it Tote. So it meant to one to everyone. And the idea was to actually deliver snacks um, to university students while they were mm. studying. So mm. that was the angle that I was trying to go for. And then it didn't really work out because I think New Zealand wasn't ready for it. But Philippines was. So that's why I came home to Philippines and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do food delivery here. There's bigger <laughs> opportunities here other than yeah. food delivery. Yeah. Some of the other Actually, bizarre, yeah. even, um, uh, sorry, Justin, but um, even some of the non-traditional ones that you would think uh, would never go online, like um, we have a cement manufacturer mm. selling their cement to their wholesalers and resellers online, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, fresh, fresh seafood, right? From the yeah. palancas being sold online. Oh, you know what I, I've seen? Like the, the coolest one that I've seen so far? Steak. Like they mm. bring the steak to your house. You've seen mm. that? Right? Oh, man. Yeah. I've seen, it's So yeah. sick. I like they bring a food truck cooks. and they cook it. Yeah. yeah. Man, I, I think that's one of the things that I really wanted to, yeah. to kind of test out. Because I think that's an interesting concept. They bring the I'll, give you my, I'll give you my address. You can send some steak over to me. <laughs> sure. I'll sort you out. <laughs> yeah. Flick it well, through. While you, yeah, well, while you send um, Andrew the address, I think we should go for a break first before we continue our Let's discussion. So see you later. Prosper Nation. All right, we'll be back. Hello, everyone. We'll this back. is Vincent Tori Bongolan. I founded eTech International to cover the demands in the online space, wherein we envision to deliver seamless, fastest, and cost effective delivery of products and services. Hey, this is Gretchen Ronquillo of Alessana Manila. We'd love to you to try our fine dinnerware and other dining items. Alessana Manila brings to you beautifully created items focusing on your home festivities. Please visit our website at www.alicenamanila.com. Hi, this is Jonas from Jameson Daughters, and we would love for you to try our handmade noodles because we want you to have a long life. And that's why I'm inviting you to try our April promo called Buy One Give One, wherein if you order one of our handmade signature Hokkien noodles or Hokkien Mee, we'll send you a second one to share to somebody you care about or somebody who deserves it. For more information, Try jamesanddaughtersph.com, made possible by prosperna.ph. Thank you, guys. Hi, I'm Roberto Carlos Rapal, owner of Somas. Today, I'd like to show you our products, such as Crazy Carabao, Monkey Eagle, Gross Craft Brewery, and we also got liquors such as rum, gin, wines, and many more. But not only that, we also sell THC chips locally made here in the Philippines. So hurry, come visit us at salmasatsat.com. Hi, and we're back. So before we um, start again, I would just like to say thanks to our Prosper Nation, eTech International, Alacena Manila, James and Daughters, both artillery, SOMAS for their um for the pro for the commercial set they've sent out. And if you want to avail them, you can check out their websites. Um we'll be posting our the website there. So um now that we're back, uh let me just read a few of our comments. So Gab said frequently asked questions should be ready and available. Time, cost, monies, and trust ain't going to be gained right away. Earn it by being transparent and give the big five. 
is true. I also agree with that. Because sure. um, sometimes you can just, um, as a help to the customer, we can shorten the process. It's very efficient, not just for us, but also for the customer. And then um, Mark said, fitness, fitness home workout actually grew a ton. Workout from home gym equipment and accessories. Also, the kitchen cookware niche blew up with people cooking and preparing their own meals during lockdown, which is actually true. There are a lot of bakers that was created in the during quarantine. And um, Pro said, uh, those are nice boots, so shout out to Boot Artillery. And he has some yeah. products in his office ref. So can you share with can you share us that, bro? <laughs> yeah, why don't we um I'd love to hear and see, you know, um, because even though we're streaming live, you know, the uh the video will be played and available on Facebook. So if you got a home based business, uh a small business that you started during the pandemic, um post it and share it. We're here to, you know, help you grow and give you access to uh, the ability to grow your business. So love to hear about it. And so chat away, whether it's live or in the future. Yeah. Um, actually, um, based from our topic before, which are the um, things that, that became online now, one of the products that I really like are those from farmers straight to the table kind of products wherein the um, these sellers or these companies help farmers which um, they erase the middleman and they export it directly to the customers, which is not That's just all. a help for the customer itself, but also for the farmers that were affected by the pandemic. That's why I really love sure. that kind of business actually that started. Mm. And they also grew yeah. a lot during the quarantine. Mm. Yeah, I think um, digitizing agriculture is honestly like a, yeah. a really good thing, especially for customers, because you can just get it direct from the from the um, suppliers, and it really, to be honest, it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> I think that's the end note. There. Oh my god! If you get it straight yeah. from the supplier, oh, so cheap. Yeah, you're that. I'm sorry. I mean, that is a huge thing. People don't realize, right? You know how much savings the digitization of these industries have uh, really created for the uh, suppliers, merchants, you know, the farmers, and the customers. It saves everybody money. Exactly. Mm. It kind of reminds me of that business term, um, you know, it, it says um, going up the vertical. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it, but it's basically uh -huh. for a business, you are to kind of like, instead of you having to buy from a distributor, you actually just buy it directly from your supply. And I overall, the business actually um, functions better because now you take off that extra cost getting it from the distributor but you can work it out to actually just get it straight from the supplier. So it's always mm. good to go up the vertical. But of course, it's a sad thing for the, the people that were cut out. But of course, yeah. you know, it, it's always going to be that game that you know, we're going to be playing in, the, in a sense where we're trying to get the, the lowest price that we can get it for so that we can really maximize um, what we're getting it for, you know, the profit That's margins and everything. That's yeah, I mean, if, if merchants, suppliers, and manufacturers could just very, very simply look at the game. Hmm. The game is, um, it's your opportunity to go direct to customer. Yeah. Direct to consumer. Sure. This is your right opportunity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, there's no other simple way to put it. And, you know, before you even get to price, it's hmm. a business model that works. Who doesn't want to go direct to their customer? <laughs> yeah exactly mm. that's why even suppliers are setting up their online shop now like some suppliers don't have facebook don't have instagram but they are very profitable in like shopee the shopee and lazada because that's where they they set up their supplier shop they earn very mm. a lot actually from just setting up there 
Well, the best way in you know that you can do that. It certainly sounds easy, but if you really want to succeed in going direct to customer, you know you've got to commit to the marketing activities of building your brand. You know, being consistent online, right? Mm. Hey, what's Mark talking about? DTC? Yeah, direct to customer, buddy. Mm. Yes. Mark, tell us about yourself, brother. I, you might be, yeah. are you relative to Justin or not? You seem to be a fan. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but he does have like a drop shipping business. Who does? So, Who does? Mark. Oh. Ah, uh, there you go. I invited That's awesome. Yeah. I invited Mark, him. Mark, tell us about it, buddy. Throw it in the chat. We'd love yeah. to hear about it. Yeah. Drop shipping is huge, yeah, guys. Um, Oh man, that's true. <sighs> if you're a Andrew, what's your take on oh, sorry. What's your take on drop shipping? Um, back in 2018, we we made two million in two months just off of drop shipping. What? That's wow! That's how big you can really make it, and you can even like upscale it to 10 million for one one year. Like, it's ungodly that you can really um just maximize everything with um drop shipping. Especially if you can really scale up, um, so many ways that you could really go about with it. Um, yeah, I think we, we got lucky at that time. And with good marketing, you could basically sell anything. Um, I think back in the day, 20, 2015, 2016, I think that was the peak of drop. And a lot of people made money just um, connecting Alibaba to the website, like that typical thing. Man. <laughs> It made so much money. Wait, it's crazy. Wait, wait, wait. Speaking of kind of drop shipping and those kind of um, you know new business models, right? I have a hilarious story. This is absolutely freaking hilarious. And um, you know the Prospera team, you know, knows a little bit about this story, but they don't know the full story. So, um, so uh, admittedly. Right. Um, I was somehow caught in a moment where I needed to really uh, entertain myself. Right. And so I was I just got caught in this nasty web of YouTube videos. Right. And everybody be honest, like I know I'm not the only one that gets on this YouTube binge and you keep watching and drilling down and watching and drilling down. Right. Oh, and man. so I found myself in this um, maze of this category of um, the wonderful YouTube algorithm where they were, uh, they started, you know, pushing a bunch of um, comedy, funny, um, what do you call that? Uh, videos where you know people are in real life just doing weird things um uh what do, what do you call that just you know like stunt um, videos. uh yeah Think? like stunt oh pranks pranks yeah all oh, right yeah. social experiment yeah. yes exactly and so there's this guy and i'm sorry i have a very shallow sense of humor right and it was late, you know, a lot of work. So that's my excuse. I needed to be entertained. <laughs> and so there's this guy and he would go to these public places and he would just, he would pretend that he's farting. He would make these, you know, nasty farting noises, right? What? Like going up, going up the escalator at a, or at a park, you know, or at the beach or, you know, walking near, you know, some, you know, cute girls or something. And he would just lay out, you know, a big, wet, sloppy fart. Oh, what? What's, what's the I, point of that? I, the point is, it's hilarious. It's hilarious, right? <laughs> and when you're stressed. You know, <laughs> you know what? You know how slick this guy was? Uh -huh. his, his real what do they call it? His real stunt, his real gig is he's selling prank toys. He has an oh, online oh, smart. smart. He has an online store smart. where you can buy these all kinds of 
prank toys, and he was testing his, his farting toy. So now, the good you know, the, the, the team knows, you know, why sometimes in our meeting, you know, all of a sudden there are farting noises, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you buy one? Dude, I was a sucker. I bought one. I not only bought <laughs> one, but <laughs> I bought. Oh, that's crazy. I I bought four of them, and uh, I was thinking about putting it in our you know new hire kit for a stress oh, reliever, yeah. right? When you're, when oh, you're yeah. yeah. Wait, what did your <laughs> wife say why. about this? Did she? Did she? She's, yeah, she saw the delivery. She's like, what the heck is that? <laughs> right? Oh, God. Yeah. During and, our meeting, I hear that. And I, I don't want to speak. Oh I, didn't, I didn't know where it was coming from. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So, hey, That's the crazy. point is, outside of it being a hilarious story, it was very simple, raw videos that were entertaining, eye-catching, and it led yeah. an innocent, you know, emotional uh, impulse purchase. And I had no idea where this guy was, where he was from. I, don't, I still don't even know where the product came from. And <laughs> I, I trusted him and I bought yeah. fart toys from his online store. The to be honest, that, that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. That, that was my take before. Like, influencers are going to be the best marketers if they knew how to sell. If they knew what to sell and how to sell it, they would be so successful, honestly. True. And, yeah. True. Like, I, I think that's that's the evidence right there. They could just that's sell true. fart toys that Dennis would buy off the bat. <laughs> off the <laughs> and put it that's in meetings. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a testament that yeah it works and it's it's fun. <laughs> it's true. So um, actually connecting to that um, what do you think? What do you both think about the influencer marketing nowadays? Like, what's your take on it, and how it can it help MSMEs? Really, because you know um, they keep thinking now that it's the trend, especially for nope. the future. 2016, it was a trend, but now no way, Jose. I wouldn't, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not discounting, like, I'm not saying all influencers are bad, but right now, um, pick and choose the ones that would really fit your mold. I think I said this in the workshop earlier today that um, best thing to actually um, kind of verify if an influencer is actually good for the business, just Talk to them. Treat them as a business partner to your business. Don't treat them as someone that is just an influencer that's there to do your marketing. Because they'll just get free shit from you. Like they will get free shit and walk away. And they <laughs> will charge you so much stuff. Like, oh my God. I think I talked that's to an influencer true. recently. Two million followers. He does 50K for one hour of engagement and he will just post a story and like 50,000 pesos. <clears throat> what yeah. category was he? Our... What category? Um, I think general, like, like he does ever everything. He does like comedy. He does who got. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the main thing now is he's transitioning to, like, he's become like a songwriter. He's um, done some acting as well. So he's kind of like a like a general, like known influencer. But still, like, what, 50 grand? No, nah, to be honest, um, for MSMEs, I would highly suggest just speak to them and check if they would be like a good business partner for you. If so, then mm -hmm. yeah. They can become an influencer for you. But for the yeah. most part, just honestly find find a way that you can skip the influencer part. It's um it's not really worth it right now for me. Yeah. 
Actually, when my business started, I was in on on the trend of influencer marketing. But I really did choose the um influencers I cho- I wanted. I usually chose people that I knew who worked out, who yes, chose um who posts workout videos. But there was one time I was very um I liked this girl because she was very pretty, and I thought that um. My active wear would good look, would look good on her, so I sent her some. And then I w- a few days later, I haven't heard anything from the courier itself as well as from her. So I started texting the cur- courier because I was worried that it didn't arrive to her. And then only to find out that she w- she already received it um, a week ago, and she didn't even bother to tell me. And then. I tried That's messaging great. her on Instagram where I um originally messaged her. I also texted uh, her, but I never received okay. any reply. After that, okay. I like unfollowed her. Justine, how many followers did she have? Just off the she bat? had actually like eight hundred followers. So like I was very attracted with that since I was you know a very starting. I only had like a five hundred followers on my Instagram. This is eight hundred thousand or eight. Well, how many? Eight hundred thousand, and she was yeah. very popular in TikTok. And since I wanted my active bear to see on TikTok dancing and stuff, I wanted to send her. But that's what happened to me. That's the thing, guys. Like, um, get this. Um, back when I was still in the influencer circle, I had someone that had eight hundred thousand followers get two like um bodyguards bouncers right next to him just to just for show like uh, what i i don't get it <laughs> like he went to a party and then he had two bodyguards just because he can and i'm just like bro you're, you're at a party you're with influencers as well there was a guy <laughs> who had two million followers who was just walking right next to him like right, like he, he just walked right past him, and he had two million followers. And then this guy with eight hundred thousand is like, oh yeah, that's right. And that's like, bro, like, come on, come back to earth. <laughs> like, uh, bro, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. My, so, my, but, my, my problem with influencers is really before we even get to the influencer, either taking action or doing something good to benefit your brand before you get to that point my problem with you know influencers and influencer marketing is actually the mindset of the merchant or the the customer or the brand because most of them are hoping most of them are praying that an influencer will be their silver bullet that's what's missing if we had somebody to endorse our product, right? And they want instant success. And I'm sorry, instant success is very, very rare, right? Easy and come, easy so, go. And that's why, uh, sorry, Justine, that's why people get suckered into bad mm. experiences because when you look for shortcuts in digital, you're going to be setting yourself up for failure. You know, digital is no different than any other business model. It takes commitment, it takes understanding, it takes uh, consistency, right? And it takes an investment. It's not a it's not a overnight deal. You know, that, so That's before you, yes, there's some challenges once you you know uh, get an influencer, and maybe that's a whole nother you know, topic on its own. But my concern is just the mindset because, you know, people are hoping and praying for a miracle and businesses aren't made on miracles, right? They're just not, you know. But, uh, you know, speaking of, you know, tried and true best practices, I think one of the things that we wanted to help people with today is, you know, our top recommendations of things that they can do to create efficiencies or simple, simple ways to automate their business. I'm sure, especially in the Prosper Nation community, we've got a lot of people following and watching. If you've got ideas to help, 
you know, your fellow business person, your fellow startup, your fellow home-based business, please share things that you've done uh, that yeah. have helped, that have helped your business. Yeah. yeah. So Andrew, what, what do you, what are the top things that you always recommend and see that, that help companies? Um, let's see. Um, in, in terms of what, sorry, just so that I can get some context. Just, just really just anything to, to create efficiencies or automate their business. You know, mm. it doesn't have to be fancy. It could be simple. It could be technical, right? Mm. Yeah. So, um, it let me see. Like. But, Sorry, my wife just got some water. But, um, <laughs> in terms of, she grabbed my water. She, she was, she had a bit of cough. But, yeah, in terms of efficiencies, I would say, Always start with a sales platform. Hands down, I think that's the most underrated thing when it comes to selling online. A lot of people tend to think that they just can start a Facebook page and they go straight to selling. But they realize after, let's say, 20 orders that if you don't automate the sales process, you're screwing yourself. You're shooting yourself in the leg and then it's going to be really hard to just go from there because... Um, I think that's the that's the reality. If you don't automate the process and you don't leverage that whole thing, you're just going to end up having to manually do every single thing. So it's so hard. It's so hard, honestly. Um, I think that's one of the main things that I just wanted to to um, focus in on. So sales process, getting it automated, and now you can fully start marketing. Like. You could just scale up from there, especially if you mm -hmm. find like a like a niche. I think um, Mark mentioned something about this one. It's all about finding that niche. Um, it's a it's a quick growth hack. It could be two ways, like finding your own niche or finding the niche market that buys your product. It could go both ways. Mm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Similar, similarly, you know I. I was giving some advice to a um, to a startup online business, and um, you know they they wanted to rush and do some ads right away, and you know we could you know you know uh, have uh, you know suggested that yeah go ahead and throw the ads on, and we're absolutely believers in that. But I said you know what is your goal? Well, we want to sell you know X amount of whatever ABC you know, within this week. And I said, well, you know, how are you going to respond? Mm. Um, because if you're going to sell, you know, 10, 10 of whatever, that means you're probably going to have, you know, 50 to 100 inquiries, right? That's just the, the, <laughs> the, the law of numbers, right? The numbers game. And um, so who's going to be there to respond to them? Because if you can't respond quick, because leads are pretty much ready to buy, yeah. then you're wasting your money, <laughs> right? And uh, a lot of people don't know that, you know, uh, I have seen an increase in some of the autoresponders and um, on those Facebook sellers and you can create a welcome message you can create a uh, a menu in your Facebook chat, right? Um, and these are all free tools, right? But definitely people should be, you know, uh, like you mentioned, just trying to automate that sales process. And that, you know, I would add to what you were saying, Andrew, is map out your sales process so you know how to automate yes. it inside exactly. uh, a chat bot with an autoresponder or... Mm. Or a website, you know, the free Facebook. Mm. <laughs> right. Justin, what are you doing with your business? Are you? What have you Doing learned to audit? Um. Well, I learned to like um list down since you know I'm not yet the big. I don't have that resources to you know to automate everything. But I what I do is I really um try to repeat the processes that work already. So at least I don't have to spend every time thinking about it. 
and then I arrange it. Um, I try to be as organized as possible when it comes to dealing with everything. For example, from a list of suppliers to a list of your products to the list of your discounts, even my sales are listed. So I just have to go back through them. As, um, just everything that makes everything efficient on my level, like I do it already. I'll, so you're I'll not challenge you. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Go for it, buddy. Go for it. Oh, I was I just like gonna say just thing. Like, um, yeah. honestly, I was just gonna challenge you to, um, kind of go up the the next level. Cause um, yeah. I always come across people, um, with the same kind of passion as you, but they always stay yes. within the self-employed realm. Um, I don't know if you guys know the cash quadrant, but there's basically the difference between a business and being self-employed is your business will keep running even if you're on holiday but if you're self-employed if you go on holiday your business is also on holiday so my um, challenge for you justine is find a way to automate the process and even even with um your resources right now hands down yeah. i can suggest a few things that might be able to really leverage your angle because this is where a lot of um like independent resellers stay like this is why a lot of the independent resellers stay independent resellers because they are just focused on the sales process but you can actually go up the level and go product development and it could lead the sales process maybe it's an admin or someone that can repeat yeah. that process because yeah. that you can teach that but i think yeah, the cool my- thing with you <laughs> As an entrepreneur is you can pick it you've got the eye now to know which products work better for your audience yeah. and that's how you can develop more and go up that yeah. level and who knows hey you could scale up your business and yeah, yeah. you'll be up there and oh, bro i'm gonna be so proud to actually yeah. see you actually there. my my admin now is my mom because she's the one who packs the orders when you know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's my admin. Yeah, she's my admin right now. She's the one who pay her with good food. Book for her. I (laughs) hope you're paying her well, Justin. Yes, compensate her well. (laughs) Yes. Mm. And then look at that, Andrew. That's golden advice, Andrew. I love how you put that, man. If you are on holiday and your business is on holiday. That means you have not raised the bar to automate your business and you're just your own self-employed type of setup. Nothing wrong with that, but look, everybody has big things, you know? Um, And if you say and you believe that you want to, you know, really be successful and build a business, then you got to step up to the plate. Yeah, true. Indeed. That's very true. I God would say Justine. One... <laughs> Justine, yes. here's a question for you. And this is a tip for everybody. Right? So if I was to go on your Facebook page, would I see some customer reviews? Oh I see now, yeah. I because don't have <laughs> everybody everybody wants to know. They might not ask you, but everybody wants to know. Is anybody else yeah. buying your stuff? No. And as a very simple and old saying goes, is birds of a feather flock together. When they can see, oh, see, yeah. see somebody like them buying a particular product, actual users, those are the best influencers to tie this all together. Mm-hmm. The best influencers are the customers that are using your product. Yeah. True. That. And that. That's a process that you can repeat, right? Oh. It's just getting, getting and showing those product and customer reviews, you know? That's I good. wish everybody did that, you know? Then that way you would, the entire Facebook marketplace, the, um, you know, it would, you'd see a complete separation of oil and water. Who are the real sure. legit sellers and all the other 
fly by nights trying to make a quick buck and who aren't oh, into yeah who aren't into delivering good products and services and experience that's exactly yeah cheers 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 to that Woo. yeah cheers um Digital so before we hour. yeah so before we end let's just um do a little um read again of the comments so as mark said the uh, um you asked him earlier dennis what his business was so he said that during covid launched many stores but one store i did um earned one hundred thousand dollars in two days selling face look at that very necessity, necessity selling what? now selling what? Face, masks. face masks face masks oh my god that's and crazy then he, he launched an, another in the rolling blading niche, as well as he's now focusing on is huge right now. long term growth. And they have scaled one brand in Australia to $1 million in just six months. Wow. Well, yeah. get, this yeah. guy on, get, get this guy <laughs> on Digital Happy Hour. I want this guy on yeah. Digital Happy Hour. <laughs> Let's go, And Mark. then Gab said, MSME should address this now and guarantee to generate more traffic, leads, and sales. The big five, cost and price, how much, problems, are they negative, comparisons, good value, choosing wisely, reviews. We love to know what the world is saying. And five, best in class. And then Fro said, that's the great thing with tech. You can hack growth, but the hustle fundamental should still be there. And lastly, True. by Gab again, be the true influencer by giving your followers people rich value. Where will you be without mm -hmm. them? Very correct. Indeed. And a good way to end it. Cheers, Prosper yeah. Nation. That's some great cheers. stuff, man. Way to go. Cheers, so, Prosper Nation. Cheers, Prosper Nation. So we'd like to thank you again for, um, for joining us in another episode of Digital Happy Hour. We... Hope that you learned as many insights. And if you'd like to ask more, feel free to comment down below. We'll try to answer it as best as we can. But for now, goodbye. And we hope to see you soon again, Prosper Nation. Andrew, Justin, Prosper Nation, you guys, peace out. Bye. Peace out. Have a good one, guys. See ya.